today I am in our close reader on page 14 and I'd like for you to find your close reader and open up to page 14 as well. I'd like you to follow along as we read a text called Primary Sources. This entire unit is about investigating the past and understanding how the past shapes the future. And one of the best ways that we can learn about the past is through primary sources. So I want you to listen and see if you can um, find out what a primary source is and what are some examples of primary sources. Read one. Remember to annotate as you read. Primary Sources by Margaret McNamara. Introduction. Your teacher has an interesting assignment for you. You have to pick something from the past to research. It can be anything you like. How do you find out about something from the past? One of the best ways is to find primary sources. Primary means firsthand. A primary source is someone who has direct knowledge of the topic. Someone who lived through an event is a primary source. You can interview that person about the event. You can also look for paintings, photographs, writings, and artifacts. Artifacts. Photograph. Letter. Primary sources are original objects from the past. Okay, so let's pause there. We already have the definition of primary sources. Um, primary itself means firsthand, and a primary source is someone who has direct knowledge of the topic. So I want you to go ahead and annotate along with me. Go ahead and highlight or underline those sentences there. Um, someone who lives through the event is a primary source. Um, that You could talk to them about what they went through, or you could read things that they wrote about. And then we learned some examples of primary sources. One would be an interview, um, paintings, photographs, writings, and artifacts. Um, any objects really that came from the past or from a time period that you're learning about um, are considered primary sources. So they've given us three down here too that talks about artifacts, photographs, and letters. Um, and it gives you a picture clue to help you understand what those things are. Now, before we move on to learning about each type of primary source, I did want to point out really quickly that the author here has chosen to use um, both informal and formal language. So informal language is like how you would talk to a friend um, or someone you're very close to, whereas formal language is more... Um, academic, someone, um, something that you would use when you're talking to um, people who are older than you or um, out in public, um, people that you aren't super close with. So I wanted to show you some examples of those. Informal would be things like this first paragraph here where it says, your teacher has an interesting assignment, it can be anything you like, right? Those are phrases that you might um, say to your friend, whereas um, primary means firsthand, probably not a sentence that you're going to say to your friends. It's more uh, formal, more academic. It's giving us a definition. Um, so I just wanted to point that out, um, that this text use, uses both of those, which usually um, we only see one, but we've got, we've got both of them in this text. So the first primary source we are going to be learning about um, are interviews. Interviews. Suppose you want to research your family's history. You can interview members of your family. They are primary sources of information for your topic. An interview is when you ask someone questions. Be sure to make a list of questions before you begin an interview. Also, be sure to listen carefully to the person's answers. What he or she says may lead you to ask new questions. Don't be surprised if you find out something you hadn't expected. The five W's and one H. How do you come up with a good list of questions? Do what a reporter does and make sure to get answers to, who is this about? What is this about? 
When did it happen? Where did it happen? Why did it happen? How did it happen? Okay, before we move on, I'd like to annotate a little bit more. Um, we learned about the first type of primary source, which is an interview. And I'd like for us to highlight or underline the definition here. An interview is when you ask someone questions. Okay, so especially when you're trying to find out something um, from them that they already know or something about their past, you're going to interview them. Not just like one question like you'd ask your parents, like, can I have a snack, right? That's not an interview. Um, but an interview is when you have a list of questions and you are asking somebody specifically so that you can learn something with the purpose of learning. Now, it does say that you have to listen very carefully uh, so that you can kind of put together all that information. Now, we have a text feature over here in the corner. This is called a sidebar. Oops, a second, let me highlight all of it. It's called a sidebar um, because it's on the side, right? And it gives us additional information that wasn't in the text, but it helps to um, clarify the text or it gives you additional information in addition to the text. In this case, we have um, a list of questions that a reporter might ask. It talks about the five W's and one H. So who, what, when, where, why, those are the five W's and the one H. So if you wanted to interview someone, you could use um, these six questions to get you started on your interview. You might pick a topic that has been talked about in the news. A reporter's interview is a primary source. You can watch interviews on TV. You can listen to some interviews on the radio or the internet. You can read other interviews in newspapers or in magazines. Paintings and photographs. Okay, so let's pause there. So probably you've seen or heard interviews yourself. Um, maybe you've seen them uh, interview Patrick Mahomes after a football game, right? And they learn about his experience in that game. They'll ask him questions about what he was thinking or what was happening. Um, sometimes you'll see them interview um, political parties or um, people who are in charge like the mayor or the president. Um, sometimes they interview celebrities to find out about their movies or uh, more about their lives. So interviews are a really good way to get to know more information. Now we're moving on to our second um, and third type of primary source and that is paintings um, as well as photographs. Photographs is another word that um, we use for pictures. Um, when you take a picture, that is a photograph, um, and then a painting is something that is drawn. So let's listen in on paintings and photographs. Photography did not exist until the 1800s. Before then, people painted and drew pictures of other people. They painted important events. These paintings are primary sources of information. They show how people lived long ago. They tell us about history, too. This painting shows people from colonial times, hundreds of years ago. This painting shows the American Revolutionary War. This event happened more than 200 years ago. All right, so first we had interviews. Now we have paintings and photographs. So before they had photographs or photography, which I know is hard for you to think about because your parents probably take lots of pictures of you on their phones um, instantly. But a long time ago, um, until you know before the 1800s, they didn't have cameras. So they couldn't take photos. So the way that they would um, remember something is by painting or drawing what they saw what they saw happen. And so since we don't have any pictures of those times, we have to use paintings to help us to understand um, what life was like back then, right? You can learn a lot about people um, from the past by looking at these um, pictures we can see, or paintings, I should say. We can see what kind of clothing they wore. We can see um, major events that happened, what that looked like. Um, so there's lots of different options um, when we're looking at a painting of things that we can learn about. Um, so let's see. 
people painted and drew pictures of other people. They painted important events, um, and those tell us about history and how people lived long ago. Go ahead and underline um, those sentences as well. Um, I do want to point out while you're doing that that these paintings here helped clarify what was in paragraph six here. Um, we get to see kind of some examples of what they were talking about in terms of using paintings as a primary source um, as well. Quickly became an important way to record events. Almost every major event from the 1900s to today has been captured in photos. Photographs are good primary sources for topics from the past. They are good primary sources for things that happen today, too. This photograph shows Martin Luther King Jr. speaking in Washington, D.C. about 50 years ago. This photograph shows the volcano Mount St. Helens erupting about 30 years ago. So before we had photographs, they did paintings, but once photography took off, um, then all of the major events were photographed rather than people sitting down to take time to draw or paint a picture, which obviously takes a lot more time than just snapping um, a photograph. And so they um, have been photographing things big events such as Martin Luther King Jr. or the, the volcano erupting, um, even events that are important to your family, right? You probably take pictures um, at graduations or weddings or even birthday parties and, and little things like that that your family wants to remember. Those are all uh, primary sources because they are from the time that it happened. They help reflect that um, exact time period. So um, let's see here. Let's see what we should annotate. Um, photographs are good primary sources for topics from the past. Go ahead and underline that for me. And then almost every major event from 1900 to today has been captured um, by photos. So let's look back. We've done interviews. We looked at paintings and photography. Um, and now we're going to learn about how writings have also been important primary sources um, to learn about history. Writings. The written word is another primary source. It is one of the oldest primary sources. In the past, people sent handwritten letters to one another. Now they send emails, diaries, newspapers, and documents are other forms of the written word. They are good ways to learn about the past. The Declaration of Independence is an important document about the founding of the United States of America. Okay, so um, writings are one of the oldest primary sources. I mean, if you even think back to um, the cavemen days, right? They would draw pictures on walls to help record history of um, what was happening back then. We've actually learned from those. Uh, handwritten letters are another form of writing. Um, now emails, uh, diaries, newspapers, and documents are also used to help us learn about the past. Um, even last week we read diary entries about what life was like on the Oregon Trail, and that helps us to understand um, truly what they experienced back then because um, they were written in that exact time period. Uh, we also talked about another important document earlier this year. We talked about the Constitution, and with that, that set up the framework for the United States. So again, uh, writing that's super important and helps us to learn from our past and understand our past. Artifacts. Artifacts are things made by people. They are another important primary source. We can learn about how people lived and worked by looking at old tools. Artifacts show what daily life was like in the past. Old toys tell us how people used to have fun. These toys were made more than 50 years ago. Do they look like today's toys? 
Okay, so we had interviews, paintings, photographs, writings, and now artifacts. Artifacts are things made by people. Uh, we often find these in museums and they help us to understand the way people did certain things or um, how they dealt with the things that they were encountering during their time period. Um, and so we can learn a lot about how people lived and worked by looking at their old tools. Um, it shows us what daily life was like in the past and it also helps us, just like we've been learning about with inventions, um, seeing old artifacts um, and learning how to make those things better, how to invent ways to um, improve them uh, is also super important for um, our future. And so those are kind of fun things that we can learn about the past from as well. Conclusion. A primary source is directly connected to the topic you are researching. A primary source offers first-hand knowledge of a topic. Interviews can be primary sources. So can paintings, photographs, pieces of writing, and artifacts. Once you decide on a topic, primary sources will get you started on your journey into the past. Artifacts Interview Paintings Writings Photographs. Okay, so in conclusion, we learned about primary sources, um, including interviews, paintings, photographs, pieces of writing, and artifacts. And they can really help you uh, to better understand something from the past.